sustainable shrimp farm, farming, a high density biofloc dominated no water exchange um, system. Um, there were quite a few people that are, were involved in all of what we are going, what I'm going to present here. And uh, the bottom line, what we try to do here is to generate a tool for people that are kind of lost in the dark and provide them some guideline how to deal with this complicated system called BioFlock. So what I'm going to cover in this uh, uh, short presentation, some of the highlight of what we are going to do uh, and but already in the process of making. Um, <coughs> basically, uh, reducing aquaculture environmental impact is a widely accepted goal of the seafood uh, producer, retailer, and uh, consumer, as uh, been stressed earlier in other presentation. Consumer increasingly drive this trend by demanding seafood that meets sustainable production practices that reduce aquaculture environmental footprint. The issue is whether or not they will be willing to pay more for the product. Addressing this concern requires a shift from the traditional flow-through system to a circulating aquaculture or RAS. Adopting RAS proceeds slowly because basically currently it is less expensive to discharge wastewater than to treat it. Other issue is the water treatment requires a level of technical expertise not yet widely developed in the aquaculture team. <clears throat> to encourage adoption of FRAS NOAA through the National Sea Grant, funded the Manual on Design and Operation of Superintensive No Water Exchange Bioflock Dominated Shrimp Production, based on the experience we gained in uh, Texas A&M AgriLife Research. Uh, Participants include the Texas A&M AgriLife Research, Auburn University, Florida Organic Aquaculture, and Texas Sea Grant Extension Service. Um, basically, the manual contained instruction for many routine tasks and description of procedure developed at the AgriLife Research Facility with emphasis on most recent production trials. The style uh, <coughs> targets a wide group of stakeholders, including entrepreneurs interested in building and operating a pilot of the Texas A&M AgriLife Research bioflock dominated system. A pilot provides hands-on experience under local condition that inform a decision of how or whether to incorporate bioflock dominated uh, concept in uh, the business plan. Economic analysis also based on the actual production trial are included and will prove useful for those people that are going to use it as a tool. The manual contains helpful uh, appendices and general topic related to closed system, such as equipment and procedure options that may be unfamiliar to those which are working with our, our system. The manual should encourage adoption of this sustainable production technology and so contribute to the rev revitalizing the Texas and the US shrimp aquaculture industry. Uh, what are bioflock? We are talking about bioflock, and here are some of the definition assemblage of living bacteria, algae, fungi, cyanobacteria, protozoan, and non living uneaten feed, waste component all together. They are irregularly in shape from a small size to um, one millimeter or so, and about uh, in density one gram per milliliter, so they are buoyant in the water column common in aquatic ecosystem, including aquaculture production system. The bioflock uh, composition and uh, uh, classification. Composition fluctuates, uh, <coughs> but bacteria typically dominated with up to 100 million bacteria per milliliter. Many physical and chemical factors determine composition, like the O, temperature, salinity, pH, for the period and type of organic carbon supplemented to the system. And that's something that, if we'll have time, we talk about it. Supplementation of organic carbon, it's over uh, abused in uh, the system. Biofluoric bacteria include autotrophs that produce the organic compound from inorganic compound and heterotrophs that ingest organic compounds. The flock varies <coughs> in protein concentration 
uh, anywhere between 12 to 50 percent, lipid 0.5 to 41 percent, carbohydrate 14 to 59, and ash from 3 to 61 percent. As you can see, very wide variation depending on the condition. The marine flock typically is rich in amino acid, valine, uh, lysine, leucine, phenylalanine, theronine, but deficient in essential amino acid like arginine, methionine, cysteine, as well as vitamin C. The quantity and quality of the bacterial organic method determine a flock nutritional value. Flock alone is insufficient for growth and survival required by high density uh, shrimp culture, as mentioned in previous uh, presentation, as uh, high quality, uh, fully formulated um, uh, uh, diet will shrimp will perform far better than other one. Otherwise, the uh, bioflock dominated system approach is the subject of the manual rather than the bioflock exclusive exclusive approach. Uh, bioflock dominated system rely on bioflock and specially formulated feed that supply nutrient missing from the flock. Uh, beyond its nutritional value, bioflock also is man used for managing water quality, and that's very, very important as we manage to show that we can produce very high biomass uh, uh, under these conditions uh, and, uh, and very successfully. And now, advantages of indoor bioflock, water conservation, small footprint, uh, UM production, uh, faster growth, lower disease rates, uh, <coughs> More efficient protein use, lower feed requirement, higher yield, and overall sustainability. There are also issues related to disadvantages of using this system, including high per unit area capital investment, techni technical operating complexity that uh, will require much more trained people to run. Uh, power failure is a very, very critical, and you have to have a backup or backup of the backup higher energy input that is also need to be taken into a, uh, account, you, uh, issue related to liner toxicity, toxin, uh, disease risk, and high production cost than traditional outdoor pond. The Texas A&M AgriLife Research System uh, aiming at year-round uh, indoor bioflock dominated production of the Pacific white shrimp at very high densities, yield of marketable size shrimp at high as high as 9.7 or even higher kilogram per cubic meter of water, which is about 10 times more than the regular uh, yield that you expect from outdoor pond. Uh, this uh, Texas A&M uh, supported research and development system has reached a point at which a detailed description of its design and operation is ready to be communicated to the Texas and the US aquaculture uh, sector. The manual is a comprehensive description uh, of the design and management of the Texas A&M AgriLife Research Bioflock Dominated System. This technology differed significantly from that of uh, the one described by Avni Melech in 2015. Beside organic carbon from feed, it does not require supplementation of, to sustain heterotrophic flock. It is a mixotrophic system. Basically, in this environment, you can uh, produce high yield, almost 10 kilo of shrimp per cubic meter, and you do not need to provide or uh, supplemental organic carbon, and that's very, very unique. Uh, the manual has 16 chapter and appendices. Chapter one, introduced this, um, introduction, describe development of bioflock technology. Chapter two, shrimp biology. Uh, this is also for people which are not really familiar with the shrimp, so they will have a little bit of uh, understanding of uh, the animals that they are dealing with, including the life cycle, nutrition, and choice of species that you can work with. Chapter three is a bioflock. Describe its composition, structure, development, and advantages. Chapter five, uh, four, five, and six deal with the water site selection and production system requirement and system treatment preparation. And uh, basically, although every system may have different condition, but we are focusing on our particular case and somehow uh, from time to time also highlight other issues related to it. Chapter 7 uh, deals with water quality management, explaining the fundamental of controlling dissolved oxygen, pH, temperature, salinity, nitrogen, 
alkalinity, total suspended solid, settleable solid, and turbidity, and waste in the indoor biofloc dominated system. And here is a, a place to say that basically, when I work with a small farmer in different places, there is some misconfusion or misunderstanding and, and, and not being able to determine or to make the difference between settleable solid and total suspended solid, which are really important in order to manage the system properly. Chapter eight and nine deals with nursery and grow out uh, <coughs> phases, describe nursery and grow out, including lesson learned over the two decades of work at the Texas a and AgriLife Research. <coughs> Chapter 10, 11, <coughs> shrimp harvest and wa <coughs> wastewater and disposal contain information on design, operation, and equipment used in these critical tasks. Um, <coughs> Some aspects of disease and biosecurity introduced in previous chapter are treated in more detail in chapter 12, which is disease and biosecurity, because these topics are critical to producing a healthy crop in a sustainable manner. Um, chapter 13, economics of super-intensive recirculating shrimp production system, uh, covers the economic viability of super-intensive biofloc dominated system to include Enterprise budgeting, uh, bioeconomic model suitable for developing business plan and uh, <coughs> an, uh, analyzing scenario, uh, capital investment example, factor affecting cost of production, economic analysis of the Texas A&M AgriLife research trial, and marketing principle uh, and sensitivity analysis, which are important in terms of what if. Chapter 14, the evolution of the Texas A&M uh, biofloc dominated system described component including site structures, system design, support system, nursery and go out research result, and current and future research direction. Uh, chapter 15 and 16 provide troubleshooting table and useful technical sheets. Uh, here I wanna mention that basically the um, manual is in the final stage of being uh, available for download for very, very inexpensive uh, uh, cost. We are shooting for $40, $50, so everybody will be able to download it. The main issue we are facing right now, because we have created a lot of hyperlinks in, these, uh, in this manual, it, we gave a really hard time to the people dealing with the page layout in order to really make it very uh, friendly user for the end uh, user. Uh, the appendix provide water quality testing procedure, including TCBS, plating of Vibrio. That's something that, again, uh, shrimp producer of different level, different mag magnitude, they, they, they have uh, those salesmen come to them and say, you know what, you use this product, put it in your water, and off you go, and you can go to sleep, and everything will be rosy. It doesn't work like that, and we are trying to educate them, and tell them that there are tools that they should be uh, using in order to, to evaluate whether or not the product that, or probiotic or any other product that you add into the water or to the feed is really doing you any good. And if you can document it, then you are in a better shape and then you can use this tool much more efficiently. And then we are, do are talking about the water quality map. This is a software that has been developed by one of the co-author <coughs> on uh, this uh, manual, and hopefully it will be available as an app that everyone will be able to download it and use it as it is uh, uh, providing a really nice tool to deal with, uh, say, in, uh, in order to maintain adequate uh, environment for a mixotrophic to work, uh, you need to maintain certain alkalinity, you need to maintain pH, you need other issues that you need to uh, keep under control. And this software basically will tell you what are the tools that are available and at what level you may want to use them in order to get there. So here is uh, some of the uh, different participants generally in our work uh, through the uh, years. We used to work uh, with the industry very closely in order to um, basically to benefit both ends, and it worked really nice for us. And finally, I would like to acknowledge all of the people that were <coughs> involved in contribution to uh, this uh, uh, manual. And finally, I was asked that 
I need to, uh, to bring some meat into this presentation. So here it, it goes. Uh, I'm showing you some of the information. Basically, <coughs> here we are dealing with 500 animals per cubic meter that we stock. And I like to talk always about stocking animals per volume and not per square meter is there the animals are in confined in a certain space and they need to deal with the water and the changes in this water quality. So basically, under these conditions, we found that we were able to <coughs> produce yield as high as 9.87 kilogram per cubic meter, FCR that was varied anywhere between uh, 1.39 to 1.45, and basically water usage uh, under this condition, we showed that we were able to work also with 18 parts per thousand and 30 parts per thousand. And this is very important for people that are working inland and for them to produce the shrimp in water with the sal high salinity will require basically uh, bringing more salt. And then if they need to do any water exchange or any uh, water really release, they will have problems because of the high salinity. So here we show that basically you can get very good results also with the 18 parts per thousand um, and, and uh, get the, the benefit from it. As you can see here, uh, the survival here uh, varies anywhere from 79 to 87. And uh, the growth per week, you can see here from uh, 1.75 gram a week to 1.95 gram a week. And remember, we are dealing with 500 animals per cubic meter. Um, moving into another one, uh, we talked about the issue of uh, different feed and how the different feed can affect the shrimp performance, even in biofloc dominated system. And here what we did, we used feed that basically originally was designed for semi-intensive production as compared to feeds that been designed for hyper-intensive both of them were 35 food protein diet. Nevertheless, you see here 2.03 gram per week as compared to 1.7 gram a week. Uh, so big difference in, uh, in weekly growth. You can see differences in biomass. You can see uh, the, the yield, of course, higher. And FCR, 1.25 as compared to 1.43. So all in all, <coughs> you get better performance when you are using much more highly formulated feed. Nevertheless, I don't say you have to stick with a better feed as you get more for your investment. You need to, under your condition, to determine what will work better for you. For example, you may consider feeding the HI35 twice a week, and then the rest of the, the week you may want to feed SI35. We found also the issue of feed and feed management, as mentioned earlier. If you are delivering the feed continuously, you will be using much, much better uh, uh, environment for the shrimp as you will be uh, minimizing the, the potential negative impact on water quality, on bottom quality. All of this you can minimize and maximize the output as a result of it. Um, moving into another one, uh, which here we see again uh, working with uh, <coughs> 3.6 uh, uh, gram animals. Um, 500 animals per cubic meter, again, working with about 80% all uh, an average survival, FCR of 1.4, 1.53, gram per week, 2.13, 2.12. One of the uh, important things besides the, the issue of the, uh, the yield, that we found that we were able to produce this biomass of shrimp with no use of uh, liquid oxygen or uh, bottled oxygen to support the oxygen demand of the system. <coughs> this was achieved using special injector that basically work under certain flow and uh, pressure that re uh, brings in uh, um, ambient air, mix it with the water, create mixing, and this is very, very important for bioflux dominated system to keep the bioflux in suspension because the moment Bioflux settle to the bottom, it's the beginning of the end. So it provides the mixing and the oxygenation uh, at the same time. So, uh, and uh, finally, I want to show you something that basically, that's the future. Basically, what we have done here, we ended up in an extended nursery. We started with 540 animals, uh, PL5 to PL10. Uh, they all, uh, we kept them for 62 days or so. 
and we ended up with uh, about 6.4 gram animals. Um, the, the interesting thing that we found, very high survival, and the important thing is that we ended up with a FCR of 0.8, below one. So basically, and I don't wanna go into all of the detail how this uh, uh, study or trial was conducted, but basically it provides us uh, the, the vision the, the, and the goal that with more uh, focus on these aspects, we should be able to produce shrimp of 25 gram or larger that with a very low FCR below one and get very good survival and yield and make the system much more competitive in terms of other system available on the market. I didn't have time to talk about ionic changes, waste disposal and other, but all of this will be covered in the manual and I thank you for your attention. Yeah. <laughs>